Hi everybody, Jessie here from jessiebanks.com and welcome back to another video. So today what I am going to share with you guys is all of my favorite mediums from this year. So it's mediums, it's favorite colors when it comes to watercolor and things because I have a rather large collection. Um, so there's just lots of favorites, lots of things that I've discovered this year or have continued using over the years that are just my personal favorites. So we're going to kick things off with watercolors. Now my most used palette this year is still my Mexico palette. Lots of people saw me create this one. It has changed a little bit. These bottom two colors are out and I've replaced them with a cobalt violet and transparent pyrrole orange. But this is my baby. I have refilled pans. I have used the, I love this palette. I use it for it's a mess. I don't clean it. I love dirty watercolor palettes. I love what I call my palette dirt and painting with it. So this is just kind of my be all end all palette. As for my favorite colors from this palette, I'm even going to swatch them out for you guys. Sort of a scrap of watercolor paper here. Um, and we'll go through my favorite colors. So I pulled them all out in their tube form. And I have them all, of course, in this palette. So let me get my phone out of the way and let's go through these. So my first favorite color that I have fallen in love with this year, one that I didn't use a ton prior to this year is Buff Titanium. You can see how much of that tube I've used up already too. And I have an empty one somewhere, but Buff Titanium. So this is PW6 colon one. It is a beautiful color. It makes lovely muddy colors and it just does all sorts of beautiful things for me. It is right here on my watercolor palette. It's got a pretty big dip in it. Um, it doesn't need to be refilled yet, but buff titanium. Look at that. Isn't it just like a gorgeous, dirty color? I think it's just beautiful. I love it. I love it for muddying up colors and all that kind of jazz. I just find it perfect. I also well, I'm thinking of it offhand. Don't use paper towel. I have a bunch of old towels. They're filthy um, that are stained and everything else or had holes in them that I cut up and use. And then when I have like a whole basket full, which takes usually a couple months, I throw them all through the washing machine just so I'm not being quite as wasteful as I have been before. So buff titanium is color number one. Color number two in my favorite watercolors is nickel azo yellow this color dances across the page it pushes other colors out of the way i find it absolutely gorgeous and just so much fun to paint with and use it is used now in most of the quinacridone gold mixtures since the full pigment isn't available anymore but you can see how it starts out as like a dirty earthy yellow in its mass tone but as you wash it out it gets super bright and vivid i find it absolutely stunning use it a ton so my next one is quinacridone gold now i have two tubes of it here this one is the original po 49 and that is what is in my palette but that one's not made anymore impossible to find and if you find it you pay a fortune for it so we'll swatch this one out first and then i'll show you guys the um new version from daniel smith just below it so this is the original quinacridone gold po 49 it's a lot more um orange than the Nicolazzo yellow. I think that's why I use both of them so much. Now this one is the dual pigment. So it is um, PO48 and PY150. So it's quinacridone uh, burnt or burnt gold or burnt orange or something like that. And Nicolazzo yellow. So I'm just going to touch a bit of it onto the paper here. Let's Pull that back into the tube. It's got some dry crusties around the edge of it. That's okay. This mask one will be a little bit deeper just because I put the pigment right onto the paper. But you can see that there is a difference. They mix very similar, you guys. Like when you're using them in mixing and stuff, and even on the paper, you're not gonna notice a drastic 
as drastic of a difference in your work as you are going to on your paper. Now, I have like five or six tubes of this, so I will be using this until I run out, but this is a great, it's great, it's beautiful, I love all of them. So you can see how this one's a little more orangey and this one's a little more yellow in as you wash it out, but they're both great and definitely interchangeable. So that's quinacridone gold. Oh, let's jump into some pinks. This is a Shinhan um, PWC shell pink. So this is a mixed one. It is PR9 and PW6. It's here on my palette. It's an opaque color due to the white pigment in it, but I really enjoy it, especially mixing skin tones and things of that nature. It washes out beautifully. I just really, really like it. I'm actually working on a card right now with this and a navy blue. I did pick up recently Holbein's version of the color. So it is shell pink. Um, the pigments in it are PO73 and PW6. So it is slightly different in color. Um, I haven't used it yet. Like I swatched it once, but I haven't really used it. So I don't have an opinion yet. But I did grab that one just to kind of see. Next on my list is my beloved quinacridone coral. This is probably my favorite pink red ever. I use it all the time. It's PR209. Um, yeah, it's it's definitely my favorite. It is amazing. Like, I can never get enough of this color. Ever. I use it all the time. You can tone it down with some sap green or different greens to muddy it up. You can add buff titanium to it. I just, it's my, this is probably my number one go-to red. Naphthamide maroon, another color I love to use in florals as well as in my skin tones. So it's another one I use a lot. This one was actually brought to my attention a couple years ago at the Craft and Kimmy retreat in Ontario that I went to over my birthday one year and helped out at. It was super fun. Love the whole group over at Craft and Kimmy. Um, but it is a beautiful maroon color. And the shadows on the skins and things are just perfection. And it's a great purpley red and I just, I use it all the time. Like I said, these are my personal favorites. Next up is Sap Green. Um, this one has the original PO49 in it. It don't matter when it comes to Sap Green. Sap Green is definitely a staple green. I tend to go towards these yellowy green over bluey greens in all of my floral work and things as you have seen. Um, I have been trying to branch out and doing more blue in my like blue undertone greens as opposed to yellow undertone greens. I'm learning to love it <laughs> slowly. I definitely prefer like the yellowy pukey olivey type greens over top of the bluey greens. It's all personal preference. Next up is Undersea Green. This one granulates and does all sorts of fun things. Again, it falls into that pukey, yellowy toned green family that I like. But it's really pretty. It's really pretty. This one actually comes in the Daniel Smith, the 24 metal box color set that they released. I have that one in my drawer too, but this one is made of ultramarine blue quinacridone gold and that's it and then the next green on my list is perling green this is a new tube because I emptied my old one this is a bluey type green I use it to dumb I just like it it's it's a really good dark color like it's and it's mastone it's very very dark as opposed to going towards blacks and things this one works wonderfully and when you wash it out it has more of a cool undertone than any of the other greens on my palette. These are actually the only three greens in my Mexico palette, but I use them all all the time. And last but not least, I have Windsor and Newton's Indigo Blue, which is right here. So these would be my ultimate colors for the year. There's lots of other colors I love and use but these would be the 4811 colors that like I love and I love Windsor and Newton's Indigo I don't know what it is about their particular one that makes it my favorite but it is 
So that is my favorite colors. Let's talk about paper. I definitely reach for my Arches 140 pound cold press watercolor paper. This one is the 12 sheets, 11.69 um, inches by 16 and a half. This paid pad is actually empty. There's nothing left in it. But Arches watercolor paper is the one I reach for the most. I use it all the time. I buy it in different size pads. I buy it in big sheets and cut it down. Depends on what I can get my hands on. Also, in terms of watercolors, um, my sketchbook is one of the Etcher Lab sketchbooks. It holds water very well. I really, really enjoy the paper. Um, so this is just kind of some doodling and my own things. Water tutorials, some coffee cups. Here's some more water, some veggies. This was a Lindsay the Frugal Crafter uh, tutorial she did. So yeah, so I really, really do enjoy this sketchbook. I use it a ton. Uh, this is my second one. And then uh, let's do these. For metallic watercolors, my favorites so far are my Fintex. I have two palettes of gold, like I have this one, and then I have this one which has more of the rusty colors in it as well. This gold is the one I use the most. I really love them. Um, there are a couple of the vintage palettes I want to get my hands on and see how much I like, but for gold and like silver paint and stuff, this is the one I reach for the most. I do have others in my collection. Uh, next on watercolor, I have one tube of gouache to share. This is titanium white gouache from M. Graham. It's just a giant tube of it. I've gone through a couple of these years. This year I use them for highlights, I use them for mixing, I use them in my gouache paintings, all sorts of things. So I do really, really love that. And then we have brushes. So these are my favorite brushes. This one is a Princeton and Neptune three quarter inch flat brush I use for laying down water and big background washes and things of that nature. And then I have this one. This is a Da Vinci Casaneo um, mop brush. This one's in a zero. I do have one other size in my brush roll, but I really, really like these quill brushes. Um, Escoda Versatil. This one in particular is a size six, but I really enjoy these as well. Um, of course, Silver Black Velvet. You can tell how much I use this brush. There is no label left on it. It's all worn out. But this one is a size four. I have it all the way up to a size 12. I really enjoy those as well. They're a, do a mix of um, squirrel and synthetic. This one is a Da Vinci Mastro. This one is a Kalinsky Sable brush. This is an expensive brush. I really like them. I enjoy the shape of the handles on this brush because they're more triangular. <coughs> oh, excuse me. <coughs> oh. oh my goodness. And last but not least, this is a Princeton Glacier brush. This is a super inexpensive brush. I actually bought it for acrylic and regular gouache, but I tend to use it for everything now. I really like it. It's super tiny. This one is a round size two. So those are my favorite brushes and papers and all of that jazz for watercolor this year. Um, of course, I love my Copics. I will always love my Copic markers. They are something that are great. I use them a ton. Definitely, definitely recommend Copics. I'm not going to go through them this year because I don't have any particular colors. I didn't buy any new colors. My collections kind of stayed the same over the last few years. But colored pencils. So I have Prismacolored pencils I love. I love my favorite castells but I have fallen for my Luminance colored pencils. So you can see I have a black Faber-Castell one in here. That's one thing. This pencil is so hard. I love it. I use it all the time. I keep it in with these ones. So I had picked up the 24 set of, um, oh, 20 set of Luminance colored pencils. And then I added slowly like three or four at a time when I visit the art store, another handful of pencils to it. And then this year, they came out with the 20 more colors and then four individuals. I haven't picked up the four individuals, but this one is the portrait set that I picked up recently from Luminance. I haven't used them a ton. I do love some of these colors. I don't wear down pencils really, really fast because I use them mostly in my card making. So my images are rather small, but I love the way these blend. I love that there's no wax bloom. I think they're absolutely gorgeous. Downfall is they're not cheap. But that's okay because I really enjoy 
using them. Last on terms of pencils are my drawing pencils. I have a Pentel. Um, this is just a mechanical pencil, but the cool thing about this pencil is it's self-feeding. As you're using it, it actually feeds the pencil lead itself down so you don't always have to pump it. Um, it has an eraser at the back and of course you load the back like that. This one in particular is a 0.5 millimeter, but I do love that as I'm drawing I don't have to um, always crank down the colored pencil. Well, this one is a Karen Dash Swiss Wood HB pencil. It smells like brown sugar. <laughs> It's part of why I love it. To be perfectly honest, I love that it smells nice. The wood smells really, really great. I love how dark the wood is. It's actually not stained or anything. The wood itself is just naturally that dark. So that would be my favorites of the year, you guys, um, when it comes to colors and things. And I hope you enjoyed. I will see you very soon for another video. Bye for now.